Finance Committee uh, has just released their coverage options, which weighed into a lot of these issues. Uh, and I know uh, uh, that Dr. Burgess, uh, of course, is, is uh, interested in sort of driving the House uh, toward uh, uh, catching up to the Senate, I, I, I think, uh, as, as is necessary with respect to defining uh, the reform landscape. Uh, and when we talk about uh, what uh, our organization, America's Health Insurance Plans, uh, has offered, uh, we, uh, of course, start by looking at these uh, sort of as a package or companion solutions, if you will. Uh, and as Devin indicated, uh, we talk about a mandate. We couple that with insurance market reforms and subsidies uh, to ensure that those uh, low-income individuals uh, can afford the type of coverage uh, that we'd like them to have. And when we look back, I think, at the evolution uh, of AHIP uh, and our approach uh, toward a system where we're trying to get everyone in, uh, it's helpful to sort of uh, do a little tour as to where we've come as an association uh, and to talk about uh, a uh, town meeting style listening forum, which of course is very familiar to members of Congress, uh, that our CEO and President Karen Ignani did last year. Uh, when she traveled to about 12 cities uh, across the U.S., uh, including Providence and Little Rock, Albuquerque, and just about everywhere in between. And what Karen heard uh, was uh, sort of a resounding chorus of folks who were interested in insurance market reforms, uh, lowering the cost of insurance coverage, uh, and making our system uh, more affordable, which I know is a goal that uh, Devin shares as well. And we looked, uh, as an association, uh, at the data to think about exactly what that would mean uh, to sort of uh, re-engineer a health system uh, to, to that which we could all be proud of rather than something that uh, a lot of folks have suggested now is, is, is broken in many ways. Uh, and when we did that, we were driven by the data first. Uh, so as Devin indicated, uh, there are a number of states, uh, about seven or eight, that have enacted uh, insurance market reforms in the absence of a mandate uh, and truth be told, we've seen what's happened. The cost of coverage has risen very high, and it's pushed people out of the system. Uh, some of those states, New Jersey, for example, uh, the most recent state to en en enact a uh, guarantee issue uh, and a uh, community rating, uh, since that time, they've seen their individual insurance market uh, re reduced by about half. And when we look at this, we understand that uh, the impact for young individuals, uh, as Dr. Burgess indicated, uh, is very profound and indeed uh, in the census data that uh, was alluded to, we know that the fastest growing age cohort uh, in, in which the uh, incidence of uninsurance is increasing is among those 18 to 35 year olds. So whatever we do, we want to get those folks in uh, to help uh, uh, balance the risk uh, and we want to make sure that they're not shocked uh, by the impact of uh, premiums uh, if you move uh, too far toward community rating uh, and, and in essence they're uh, subsidizing the cost uh, of those uh, with coverage, or excuse me, uh, with uh, those uh, older individuals. So I think uh, it's important again to look at this in the universe of what we're saying and that is in order to get everyone in the system, uh, our board came to the resolution that the only way we could do that is to couple the insurance market reforms uh, with a mandate uh, and with subsidies to ensure uh, that uh, uh, coverage was affordable to those uh, low-income populations that make up uh, the majority of the uninsured. And there certainly are a lot of issues uh, in addition to affordability uh, related, uh, as Dr. Burgess suggested, to the whole issue of benefit creep. Uh, this is why we've suggested uh, that there should be uh, an essential uh, benefits package. Uh, essential is a purposeful word uh, because many folks, if you suggest a basic or a minimum benefit package, uh, the automatic response is you're trying to uh, encourage people to, uh, to, to purchase the lowest common denominator. And the word essential, we believe, sort of reorients the system back toward value uh, where we think we should be, and essential sort of implying, underscoring that these benefits, uh, including in this package, uh, should be e evidence-based, uh, which as was alluded to, we know that there are a lot of mandates uh, individually at the state level now that may be very worthwhile for a lot of people. The question is,
as to whether they should be included in an insurance package uh, is another issue, and whether they provide uh, solid evidence in terms of what they're producing uh, for that individual. A couple other issues that I would uh, touch on quickly. Uh, we certainly do have a lot of uh, technical challenges that I think we have to wade through, uh, as well as governance issues uh, that was alluded to uh, with respect to the enforceability, uh, with respect to uh, how you're going to track people, how this would be reported. And those are things that I think uh, technically we have to have uh, a very robust discussion about to make sure that we're careful in the way that we devise those. What we do know, however, uh, from the Massachusetts experience, uh, we've seen that in a very short time, they've been able to get uh, the, the lion's share of the uninsured into their system. And we know, for instance, that there have been positive uh, uh, dividends on the employer side because employer coverage, contrary to what was predicted, is actually up. And we know that in terms of human behavior, people are going to pursue coverage from the easiest source possible. Uh, and in this case, a lot of people are taking up employer coverage that may, they may not have been taking up before, so that's a positive result. I also want to touch on the issue of uh, crowd out. Uh, because I think this is very important. Whatever we do, uh, I think there's a, there's a sort of consensus uh, in Washington that we want to build on the existing system. We recognize that uh, the U.S. Chamber uh, and other employers uh, throughout the country uh, have long been providing uh, this terrific benefit uh, that's very valuable to people on a voluntary basis. Uh, so as a first principle, I think everyone agrees uh, that we want to do that. And in fact, I think that sort of uh, would cause us to question uh, whether this is the time for any sort of employer mandate or pay or play system. Uh, and I'll just sort of raise that question. I know Katie will have a lot to say about it. Um, I'd like to conclude uh, by uh, thanking uh, Dr. Burgess for the opportunity uh, to uh, briefly uh, mention the meeting that was alluded to at the White House yesterday. And I think that with respect to what uh, we're doing, just as we've come forward with our set of solutions with respect to trying to get everyone into the system, again, coupling the mandate with insurance market reforms and subsidies, we've also said that we have a responsibility as a stakeholder to come forward with ways, as Dr. Burge has said, that we can promote a more efficient health system in the delivery of care, and also that we can lower our own costs. Uh, within our board of directors, uh, there is a strongly held and profound belief that if anybody knows how we can lower our costs, it's not the U.S. Congress, it's not one of the other stakeholder groups, it's the plans themselves. This is why we've been having a very robust uh, conversation around the idea of administrative simplification, uh, as Dr. Burgess again suggested, uh, some of the burden that's placed on the providers, how we can streamline that, make it more consistent, make it more predictable. Two things I'd like to mention. Uh, one of which is underway in uh, Ohio uh, and in New Jersey. We're working on a uniform payment portal system uh, that essentially, without getting into the technical issues and sort of way into the weeds on the operations side and the claims processing side of healthcare, what we're really trying to do is develop a uniform system that I would analogize to MasterCard and Visa for the banks so that just as each of the banks can issue their own card under the Master or Visa emblem, each of the health plans could have their own systems, but for purposes of Dr. Burgess and his colleagues at the AMA and others, they would feed their claims through one unified system that would give them up-to-date information on uh, benefits eligibility, claims process, and tracking. Uh, because of the way that our system developed, uh, just as we've had to sort of rationalize uh, information technology in other sectors, uh, we're doing this again on a pilot basis in New Jersey and Ohio because there are just numerous and infinite uh, technical uh, details uh, to wade through. Uh, so that's one thing that sort of we're operationalizing and testing now. One other thing that I mentioned real quickly, uh, we've had a uh, CEO level group uh, that's been looking at administrative simplification uh, at our board for some months, uh, and uh, one of the reasons why we had this meeting yesterday is because we've had very positive dialogue with our friends uh, at the AMA, uh, the American Hospital Association, and some of the other stakeholders about just some of the 
these uh, uh, claims and administrative issues that drive them crazy in an effort that we can promote some consistency and rationalize uh, the systems across the United States uh, because as everyone knows, I think that that's a goal uh, likewise that we all share for health reform. So thank you again, Dr.